this is no crank call and this kid is no dimwit like Brock putting on his Halloween costume to pull what's his face's chain. The person on the screen seems to be telling the truth or at least the truth as he understands it. Of all the messed up things the GX4000 has done, this is one of the top, this one is top of the list. Cooper asks a million dollar question. Who are you? Roderick Barnabas Northup Printers app Apprentice. Thou mayest call me Roddy if it pleaseth thee and thou art Cooper Vega, a uh, seventh grader. The seventh grade of what, Roddy inquires. What is thy apprenticeship? I'm not an apprentice. I'm in middle school. Roddy's brow furrows under his fringe of curls. Thy words are peculiar in mine ears, as I suspect my words are to thine. Cooper sighs. Tell me about it. I have just done thus, Roddy says in surprise. Thy manner of speaking is unusual. What part of England art thou from? No part of England, Cooper replies. I'm an American. Roddy's eyes open wide. The Americas, the New World. How is it that I can see thee? What is the this miracle? Cooper's head has been spinning throughout this impossible encounter. He knows he has to ground himself. <clears throat> Find some connection between this weirdness and reality. When the next question forms on his tongue, he realizes it's the one that he should have asked first. Roddy, what year is this? Roddy answers immediately. Why, it is the year of our Lord. 1596, of course. No way, Cooper blurts out. It's 2018. Dost thou think me an idiot? Look, Cooper holds the phone screen up to the school calendar hanging on his wall. September 2018. Roddy reads the date in astonishment. What is this deceit? What harm have I done thee that I am treated thus? It's the truth. You think I printed up some fake calendar on the off chance of some weirdo from 1596 might show up on my phone? I know not this phone. Roddy tells him in a growing ag agitation. Explain thyself. It's this, a uh, machine I carry around. Cooper struggles to find the words that might make sense to Roddy. Everybody has phones in 2018. You talk to people on them. That's how I'm talking to you right now. And I can see you. I mean, not the real you, more like your image. Impossible, Roddy declares firmly. I have never sat for any portrait. It's not the same thing. There's a camera. He cuts off the explanation. If you've ever heard of a phone, you probably don't know what a camera is either. There's a knock at the door and Mrs. Vega leans into the room. It's getting kind of late, Coop. Don't you think you can talk to your friend tomorrow? Cooper quickly places a GX4000 face down on his bedspread. Okay, mom, he mumbles, not at all sure if there will be a tomorrow with this particular friend. He isn't totally convinced it's happening now. All right, honey, sleep well. Cooper waits until her footsteps recede down the hall before turning the phone over again. Sorry, that was just my mom. He's talking to a blank screen. You can come out now, Roddy. The coast is clear. He tries again. Uh, the coast is clearest? Nothing. He presses the home button, but the only thing to appear is an array of apps. He speaks into the voice command, dial the most recent caller. The number that appears on the screen is his mom's. Cooper hangs up, determined to reach Roddy again, but how? As far as Cooper knows, Roddy doesn't have a phone number. He doesn't even understand what a phone is. How do you dial into the past, long distance? How about long ago? Feeling foolish, Cooper brings up the keypad and taps 1596. Your call cannot be completed as dialed. Cooper knows it can. The question is, how was it completed for the first time around? He lies on his back, staring at the darkened phone. How many hours has he spent over the past few days trying to will this miserable piece of junk to shut up, to cut out the blurping, buzzing, chiming, and vibrating that keeps him up night after night? Well, now he has his wish. The thing is totally quiet. Somehow, though, he understands that he'll even get less sleep tonight, tossing and turning, wondering if he's losing his mind. Did he really have the conversation with a kid who lived hundreds of years ago? How? Buggy phones are pretty common. They'll definitely drive you nuts. What they won't do is communicate with past centuries. And yet there's evidence of Cooper's own eyes and ears. Roddy, the thing he says and the way he said them, the accent. The words that sound like Shakespeare's plays. Even Roddy's strange clothing seems familiar, but as if Cooper has seen it before, and he has when Mr. Marquis showed everybody the school's wardrobe room on audition day. Or did I hallucinate the whole thing? That's possible too. In fact, it's probably true. The longer he lies awake waiting for his dormant phone to burst to life, the more convinced he becomes that the entire conversation was a figment of his imagination. The result of his stress will move to town and full of jerks. Plus, he has Shakespeare on the brain, thanks to Romeo and Juliet. He changes into pajamas and climbs into bed. It's settled then. There's no Roddy Northrup. There never was. Cooper pulls the covers over his chin. He solves one problem and opens up another. The fact that I'm probably going crazy. All right. Have a good day.